Episode 11 Warhead Monday, July 20th, 2037 The city was dark. The only light came from the remains of the hexacopter, smoldering on the ridges of Twin Peaks, and the pyramid downtown, the only building with power. The dim rays of first light began to creep across the sky. And with them, slowly, the lights of San Francisco began to blink back on. One by one at first. Then geometrically. Exponentially. At the top of the farm tower, Jaden was still out cold. The harvester blades had cut into their face, but not through it, their shattered visors saving them. A neon glow from the opposite building came on, lighting their bloody cheek. An eye opened. Jaden prized himself from the harvester's mouth and rose. Coughing, shaking, wiping the blood from their face. Their skull helmet was dented, their visor obliterated. One of their horns had snapped off completely. They were in pain, cut and bruised, but nothing was broken. Jaden limped over to the windows and looked out at the city. Their jaw dropped as they saw the spreading sea of lights. It wasn't uniform. Some blocks shone brighter than others. There were dark patches. None of the streetlights were on, but the houses, the buildings not under proto-control, enough of those were network that the city was free. Jaden smiled and then laughed, taking the view in, seeing something amazing for the first time. San Francisco, lit by its own decentralized power network, no longer under proto-control. Riz was still hiding out in Noe Valley. She'd fallen asleep in cover behind a filament recycling dumpster close to Jane's house, caked in sweat and dirt from the battle. She didn't know where was safe or what was happening after seeing the explosion on the ridge, so she'd stayed there. A phone icon flashed. Her eyes opened. She answered, Jaden, what the? Their power and comms are out. We can win. We can finish this. Jaden, we lost. Riz said blearily. The city is blacked out. They took out Jason. Our comm center is... That's what I'm saying. Our network doesn't have a center. That's why we can win. Their surveillance ship is down. So, we can talk on any channel we like. Their power grid is down. Our solar network is still up. Zero was right. Look at the lights. Don't you see? See what? Asked Riz, standing up and looking out at the city lights. Coming on, building by building. What do you see? Jaden watched as the lights continued to spread. A starfish! Sam was watching in disbelief. Jane too. More lights went on. He was trembling, not wanting to believe it. He turned to an engineer on a screen. I said shut the power down. Why isn't it down? Where's Rook? The entire protogrid is down, said the engineer. The power is coming from other sources. I'm afraid we still haven't located Mr. Rook, sir. Sam looked down at the city. People were starting to gather in the streets below. He could hear cheers and shouting. 3D bass started pumping, shaking the surrounding towers of glass. He could see little pirate emojis floating in the sky above the people like lanterns. Sam started pacing the room, shaking. He bumped into a chair. He lost it and turned, yanking the chair out of its magnetic field and hurled it at the windows. <laughs> the glass spidered as the chair crashed to the floor. He looked back out at the streets through the cracks, at the crowd below, at his wrecked hexacopters slumped on the hill, and the bright lights blinking back at him. Jaden stared back at the pyramid from the farm tower. They opened a screen and patched into the radio network. They took a breath. Hello, my name is... My name is Warhead. I'm a part of the group known as Skeleton Crew. We're responsible for hacking Broadside, for the attacks on Prota, for much of what's happened over the last 10 days. Riz sped towards the farm and the wrecked open-top SUV they had used to attack Jane's house. She was listening to Jaden's speech on the radio, as many people were, as many future generations would. If you suffered because of what we did, we are truly sorry, but it will not be for nothing. Riz lurched to a stop by the skyscraper farm as Jaden blew out of the entrance. All around them, people were pouring into the streets. My friend Zero MC once told me we shouldn't just judge a society by what it builds. We should also judge it by what it chooses to destroy. Riz held out a hand, helping Jaden into the passenger seat. 
She pulled Jaden in, hugging them tight. Jaden looked back at her through their open, cracked visor, leant forward, and kissed Riz. Today we can change something. Something we should have changed a long time ago. They raced towards the pyramid in the dented SUV. If you want Protoss control to end, pick up whatever you have. Hordes of people swarmed through the streets, towards the pyramid. Many wore skull helmets and broadside gear. The police walked with them, many of them also in skulls and pieces of armor too. The word skeleton crew stenciled across their backs. 3D bass seemed to be playing from everywhere. Pirate emojis filled the air. Koth, Michelle, and Art were awake after a long night stranded at the top of the construction site by the crane, guarded by marshals below, listening into Warhead's speech. In front of the pyramid, a line of riot wagons blocked the entrance to the building. A garrison of marshals stood ten deep in front of the wall of vehicles. Impenetrable. Sharpshots peered out into the crowds from windows of the pyramid. Head to the pyramid downtown. We won't get this chance again. Jaden and Riz stood in the parked SUV at the top of a hill, looking down at the pyramid at the other end of the street. So, how you want to run this? Riz asked. Jaden looked at the pyramid. How many of them are there? They asked. We've clocked 15,300 marshals, stealths, sharpshots, or whatever other crazy robots they got. Jaden noodled this. How many of us are there? Exactly 7,234. Riz replied. Jaden nodded. Tell the other teams to hit from the sides. Jaden said. We'll take the front door. Jaden looked down Market Street and noticed the half-finished skyscraper across the street from Proto HQ. A crane with a huge 3D printer nozzle hung from its summit. Is anyone close to that crane? Jaden asked. Riz opened a 3D map, covered in dots, indicating where the 7,234 broadsiders were stationed, and smiled. We have a team right there. Been posted up since last night. Guess it was too hot for them to get out. Jaden pulled up a screen, rifling through CAD files of preset shapes, stopping on a triangle. Let's get that crane online, Jaden said. Riz looked at the triangle design, then at the crane and the garrison of robots below the pyramid. She grinned. But today... Michelle climbed into the crane's cab, pulling open the same triangular design file Jaden had opened. Today, we can win this. Koth had his sniper rifle pointed at the sharp shots opposite on the pyramid. Art had his blaster trained on the floors below. Today! Jaden stared down the pyramid and the army out front. None of them are as strong as all of us! The approaching horde of broadsiders marched on the pyramid. The thick line of marshals and riot wagons out front was a wall of red and white metal studded with glowing blue eyes. Bones up! Jaden shouted into the radio, lifting their crossed arms into the air from the front of the open-top SUV. A roar went up. The mob advanced. Swarms of skull and crossbones emojis rose high into the air. The mob took aim and started firing EMP pulses. The robots clapped back with heat blasts. From the ratio of EMP pulses to ADS heat blasts slicing through the air, it was clear that the broadsiders were outnumbered and outgunned. Broadsiders started to fall. Now! Jaden cried from the SUV on the hill. Above the melee, the crane snout shuddered to life and creaked as it turned, pointing towards the line of marshals and riot wagons below. A deep whooshing sound emerged from the crane, followed by a torrent of red-hot liquid glass. It rained down mercilessly on the robots and vehicles, cooling almost instantly. The marshals thrashed and bucked as the glass solidified around them. Heat blasts and bullets continued to fly. Sharp shots sniped from the pyramid. Broadside snipers hit back from the surrounding buildings. Wax of molten glass spudged down from the crane's nose and sheets, cementing the robots in place. The robots towards the front choked as the hot liquid filled their systems, clambering over each other, trying to escape. Jaden and Riz watched as the marshals out front stopped kicking, drowning in their sticky tomb, suspended in molten glass like insects in amber. Broadsiders fired at any limb still moving. The glass was taking on a triangular shape, like a wedge of cake, or more precisely, a ramp. The robots gave up, one by one, as a final glob of molten glass burped from the crane's nose. 
It wasn't enough. Maybe a few hundred had been taken out at best. More robots started swarming the area from the sides of the building. Jaden's heart sank. There were too many. Then came a scream. My check one two one two. Bones up, bones up. Who wants it? A distorted voice roared behind a deafening wall of 3D bass. Bass lines rippled into the air from the side streets and alleys on all sides of the pyramid, shaking the windows, distorting the air, and disturbing the robots. The sea of backlit blue eyes began to flicker. Jaden's eyes widened as a squadron of rave tanks, the source of the sound, rolled into view on all sides, surrounding the pyramid. They were 3D printed and misshapen, with huge LRAD sound systems towering from their holes, painted in dazzling rave camo patterns. Their EMP gun turrets began pummeling the robots with thick bolts of lightning, offlining several with each shot. At the back of one of the tanks, Mr. Dallas and the faceless DJ in VR goggles and ski mask pumped 3D bass from the speaker stacks, jamming the robots' operating systems. Mr. Dallas bellowed, repeating Jaden's words. None of them are as strong as all of us. Wow! This broadside ain't playing games, it's wartime. Wartime. Grab your bone suits, not a minute to lose, it's wartime. Bass rippled. Blasts hit. Robots dropped. The crowd roared. No center! Jaden punched the air, turning to Riz. Damn right! Said Riz with a smile. Riz looked at the misshapen glass ramp, cooling in front of the pyramid. Then at Jaden. Let's do this, she said. Jaden nodded, taking a breath and bellowing into the radio. Phones up! Phones up! The streets roared. The broadsiders in front of them cleared a path. Riz threw the SUV into drive and floored it. They sped downhill. The rave tanks and broadsiders on the street lay down cover fire, keeping the path ahead clear as more marshals piled around from the sides of the pyramid. The SUV hurtled towards the building, flying straight up the molten glass ramp. It sailed over the riot wagons and the anti-vehicle barriers, landing in front of the building and crashing through the glass into the lobby of Proto HQ. A deafening battle cry went up. Jaden and Riz braced themselves. The SUV smashed into another line of marshals inside. They fired their EMP blasters from the vehicle as their airbags deflated and robots surrounded the vehicle. The mob of broadsiders charged in behind them through the broken walls of glass, plunging into the robots. Blasts and EMP grenades whizzed by. Green goop spattered the floors. From the top of the building, Jane watched the battle below with a smile. It was a strange moment. She'd spent years helping build this company up. Now her heart was with the rebels tearing it down. She turned to look at Sam. Her hands were still tied, and the marshal's cold blue eyes tracking her every movement. Sam had his back to her, lost in a grid of security feeds that hung above the boardroom table like a glowing patchwork quilt. He frantically moved legions of marshals on a map, shoring them up around the pyramid's lobby. But marshals were going offline as fast as he could move them in as they were either hacked or bricked. He stepped back from the screens, shaking. He turned to a marshal. Ready my aircraft. We're leaving. Jane turned to look at him. They don't need you anymore, Sam. He turned and looked at her with no pride left. His only instinct now was survival. He walked over to the bar in the corner of the room. Well, Jane. He said with a smile, picking up a small ice pick from the bar. Unfortunately, I still need you. Riz and Jaden stood in the wrecked SUV, now the centerpiece of the proto-lobby. It was surrounded by the mob of broadsiders and the patched robots they had hacked, fighting back against the ever-dwindling number of proto-controlled robots. Dead robots and pools of green caked the marble floor. The battle was all but won. The cells below proto-HQ had been holding several broadsiders and those suspected of helping them since the hack. With the security systems down, the cells had been opened by the mob, and crowds of released captives were pouring into the lobby from the tombs below. Jaden saw Taki and Shiv emerge from the crowd. They made their way over to Riz and Jaden. Jaden looked at them through their broken visor. Their eyes were soft. They felt a new sense of confidence. Jaden climbed down from the back of the SUV. I'm sorry. We should have listened to you back at the safe house. 
Taki said. I shouldn't have left you guys. Jaden replied. We're a team. Taki walked forward and hugged Jaden. Shiv put their arms around them both and pulled them into a bear hug. Riz smiled as she passed them weapons from the back of the SUV. Jaden looked up at the news screens floating on the lobby wall. The news was broadcasting a live feed from a drone close to the apex of the pyramid, searchlight trained on Sam's boardroom. Sam was holding Jane by the throat, his eyes roiling, shouting like a madman at the news drone filming him, his stealths firing at it. He looked feral. The footage cut out as a stealth finally took out the drone. The headline read, Core under siege, former exec held hostage. Jaden looked up at the elevator shafts, snaking towards the pyramid summit. Suddenly, they were steely-eyed again. Resolute. Let's move! Jaden said. I promised Zero we'd finish this. They headed to the elevators, and the others followed. Sam waited impatiently for his dog jet to arrive, pressing the ice pick close to Jane's windpipe. The sound of the battle rumbled on, far below. He peered out of the boardroom at the elevators. A squad of stealths surrounded the doors, weapons ready. Someone was coming up. He tightened his grip on Jane, his eyes fixed on the elevator. The doors opened. A pirate marshal stood inside, with one eye patched. Alone. Hands behind its back. The stealths looked at it. Confused. The pirate showed its hands. A full house. An EMP grenade in each one. It flung them. And... Blue hellfire ripped through the stealths. Jaden, Riz, Taki, and Shiv exploded from the fire exit door, guns blazing. <laughs> Filleting the stealths with EMP blasts. The stealths shook as the pulses bricked their systems. The broadsiders ran in with fists, boots, gun butts, headbutts. Sam watched, stunned. He was seeing their iron resolve firsthand for the first time, and he was terrified. He pulled Jane closer. She screamed as he dragged her back towards the helipad on the other side of the vast boardroom. To his left, he saw pirate emojis dancing in the air outside through the spidered glass panel he had thrown the chair at. To his right, the glowing quilt of screens showing broadsiders filling the lobby and lower floors hovered above the long black table. With the stealth slain, the skull-headed warriors turned towards the boardroom. Jaden led them, Riz to their right, Taki on the left. Shiv and the pirate marshal towering behind them. All guns on Sam. Turn on your holographic armor from broadside. Jaden whispered. What? Why? Taki winced. Trust me. Jaden replied softly. They all did it. A digital layer of cartoonish broadside, hard light armor, enveloped the warriors. They advanced. Sam stared at the cartoon warriors, confused and frightened. Stay back! He stammered. They edged closer, and suddenly, the thunder of rotor blades filled the sky. A stealth dog jet uncloaked, touching down on the helipad. Sam turned to see four more stealths jump from the craft. They ran in, posting up at the open doors into the boardroom, guns trained on the broadsiders. He looked back at Jaden and the crew, the panic gone from his face. Back up, or I slit her throat, he said calmly. The broadsiders looked at each other and slowly started backing away. Except for Jaden. Jaden stood stone still. In a combat stance, gun on Sam, glaring. Sam steadied Jaden. Something was wrong. Schiff smiled through the hard, light armor, shaking their head, catching Sam's eye. Oldest trick in the book, us hot. Sam frowned, confused. He looked again at Jaden, and the NFT holotag of Jaden flickered. Almost like it winked. Sam turned to see the real Jaden uncloak as they burst from the other side of the screens above the table. He dropped Jane. Jaden leapt. Sam lunged at Jaden with the ice pick just as Jaden hit him, broadsiding him with a huge right hand. His head snapped back as Jaden's fist connected. He stumbled backwards, tripping over Jane and smashing through the cracked window. He grabbed the window ledge in the nick of time. Jaden dived and scrambled forward, reaching to save Sam. Behind Jaden, the broadsiders started firing. Riz hurled an EMP grenade and the stealths at the helipad doors clattered to the ground. Sam pulled himself up. He almost hit Jaden's hand when... No! Jaden screamed. 
A huge fissure tore through his standard issue proto gauntlet with the same design fault as Jaden's old broadside glove. It broke open. His hand slid out. Jaden watched in horror as Sam fell, spinning through the dawn light with no glass, no screen, or no helmet to obstruct his view of the city. He looked down at San Francisco as he fell, like he was seeing it all for the first time, lost in a thought he would never get to share. Jaden felt their heart breaking again. All they had wanted was revenge, but they never really meant to kill anyone. Sam hit the ground face first. The broadsiders walked out onto the helipad together, holding Jaden and each other in shock, trying to process what just happened. A squadron of military hexacopters appeared on the horizon, swishing towards the pyramid. Jaden looked out at them through their broken helmet. Although the police had been marching with them, Jaden didn't feel like this was the time to find out if the army was also sympathetic to their cause. Let's go! Shiv, Taki, and Riz headed to the stealth dog jet. The pirate marshal climbed into the cockpit. Jane hurried out after them. Wait! She said. We can fix this. Together. I'll tell everyone what happened. It'll be. No! Jaden turned and shook their head. No one can know who Warhead is. That way, Warhead never dies. Jane studied Jaden's face through their visor. I know you didn't mean to kill him. I'll tell them. Why you did this. What really happened. You'll be a hero. You just took down one of the most corrupt organizations in the country. This will change everything. Behind Jane, Jaden noticed a man's silhouette, watching them from one of the screens in the boardroom. His face was hidden in shadows, but his short, silvery hair glowed around the dark outline of his head. He switched off the feed and disappeared. And we'll be here to take down the others like it. Jaden replied, looking back at Jane. And there are others like it. But we need to stay anonymous. No heroes. No center. Just results. With Sam gone, they'll sign Acra. Everything can work differently now. Jane protested. Only if we're outside of it all. Watching, said Jaden. Jane nodded. Jaden studied her. Our job is to destroy broken systems. Jaden told her. Jaden walked to the dog jet. They stopped and looked back. It's your job to create better ones. Jane smiled at Jaden, nodding again with a look of deep respect. Jaden smiled back. Their head up, carrying themselves differently. A confident warrior. A new kind of leader. Bones up, Jaden said, crossing their arms in front of their chest. Bones up. Jane smiled back, doing the same. Jaden turned and climbed aboard with the others as the doors closed. The engine roared and the aircraft took off. The military were getting close. Jane watched the stealth dog jet float away in the opposite direction back towards South City. It cloaked as it melted into the sunrise.